Hello everyone and welcome to another news coolum video and another plug side chat. So someone asked a question along a long trip, what do you do when you arrive at a charging site and all of the chargers are occupied? I gave them this response, but it's essentially my opinion on it and how I travel. You really have three choices. You can wait you can queue up or you can move on to another charger. Those three choices will depend and can be limited on a number of factors. You know, the first choice, the most obvious, is wait. And so when we arrive at a site and all of the chargers are occupied, you know, your first instinct might be to wait because that was the location you were planning to stop. Uh, maybe there were amenities there you were planning to use, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, waiting is very valid. But with the current EV technology, the current electric vehicles that are on the road, you could be waiting a long time. When the vehicle's in front of you, it's not like a gas station. If there's a line at a gas station and you wait for a pump, you're waiting 5, 10 you know, 15 minutes usually tops to get access to a gas pump. But uh, electric vehicle charger, you could be waiting 30 to 40 minutes uh, before one of the vehicles moves. And, it, and it's even worse when the drivers aren't present or don't return to their vehicle in time for their charging session to end because essentially they're just blocking the charger at that point. They might as well be icing the charger. And so these are all considerations if you're going to wait. The next option, though, is what I call queuing. And some chargers are better at this than others. Uh, I know EVgo, a lot of their chargers are equipped. So what you can do is plug in, swipe your card, activate the charge, and it will give you a notice that there isn't sufficient power to charge both vehicles. However, when the other session ends, then it will automatically start your session. So you can queue up, and especially at locations where you're going to stop and eat anyway, uh, basically what it does is it maximizes your time. So technically you're still waiting, uh, but you don't have to be waiting at your car per se. So the car ahead of you, you know, might be there for another 15, 20 minutes. Well, you could wait at your car for 15, 20 minutes, or you could plug in and queue and go do whatever you're going to do and just check your app 15 minutes later to make sure that your car actually started charging. Of course, the other consideration with that is the charger that you're using, the plug that you are going to use can't be occupied. Essentially, if it's a Chatamo and a CCS charger, it really has to be a Chatamo vehicle that's there. You're not going to be able to queue if you come to a Chatmo CCS charger and another CCS vehicle is plugged in in front of you, or if you're a Chatmo vehicle and a Chatmo vehicle is plugged in in front of you. So in order to queue, it will also be dependent on whether the station one supports it and two, the plug that you need to use can reach your car and it's the one that's not currently in use. Option number three, it's really the most preferable one, if you can, is to move on. Even in California, where the infrastructure is fairly redundant and fairly well built out right now along certain key routes, there are still a lot of times when the gap between chargers is too far uh, for you to make with the battery capacity that you had when you arrived. For me personally, I try to arrive with no more than 20 to 25% battery, and that really is limiting. That means that if you do want to try to make it to another charger, it can't be more than about 40 to 45 miles away. And if you arrive with 10% battery, well, you might be stuck with only DC fast chargers that are within 20 miles. But it is still, in my opinion, the best option of the three, if you can. Essentially, the decision of whether to wait queue or move on to another charger is going to be situational and you're really going to have to make that assessment at the time you arrive maybe talk to other electric vehicle owners if they're in their car if they're present uh, assess the chargers see what the situation is 
and then make your decision from there. It's still not ideal, right? And we still have very limited infrastructure with a you know, growing population of electric vehicles. So this will be more of a uh, decision to make in the future, but a lot of it is going to be on your personal preferences as well. So I hope that helps you, you know, kind of see what my mindset is and, and how I uh, determine what I'm going to do when I arrive at a charger site and uh, all the chargers are taken. I've only ever really had to wait a couple of times. The rest of the time I've been able to queue or move on. And I think those are the ideal solutions if they're available to you. Let me know what you think, what your experiences have been. Have you been able to successfully queue up at a charger? Uh, is your infrastructure not allowing you to do that yet or not allowing you to move on to the next charger? Are you basically stuck waiting? Uh, if you have any questions or want clarification, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.